We will start the Improvement Services Committee of uh, September 9th, and we'll note that Alderman Scannell, Johnson, here, I'm sorry, <laughs> Alderman Scannell, Burnett, Alder Gerlach, and Weary are all present. I keep thinking Brian's on our committee. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> and I have a uh, motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Motion by Alder Scannell, second by... Alder Burnett, any changes to those? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. I switched it around here. Now we can do approval of the agenda. Move to approve. Second. All right, any changes to that? All right, we have an older motion by Alder Scannell, second by Burnett to approve the agenda. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. On to regular business, uh, number one. Consideration with possible action on request by Brian Hoff to appeal the nuisance litter and solid waste materials invoice of $411.89 at 1019 Velp Avenue. Uh, Steve, do you wanna take this first and kind of lay the groundwork? Sure. Uh, included in the packet, we provided you with a copy of uh, several photographs of the property when, we, uh, when staff was out there uh, to complete the, the cleanup and some email correspondence uh, that went back and forth between the property owner uh, and our office, our administrative folks, getting him on the agenda. Mr. Hoff uh, did indicate that he was looking to uh, appeal this invoice, uh, and he did reference some uh, confusion that he had uh, regarding what was consider uh, what was being cleaned up and what was not. Uh, this is what we refer to uh, colloquially as a nuisance lot cleanup, and those are ordered by the inspection department. Uh, DPW simply provides the heavy lifting. Uh, we've got the, the trucks and the equipment to go out and complete those lot cleanups, but they are ordered uh, uh, from the inspection department. Uh, so we would actually ask that the inspection department uh, discuss this from a perspective of uh, the necessity for the lot cleanup uh, to discuss the merits of Mr. Hoff's request. So uh, I know that we do have both uh, Bill Poppy and Paul Van Kelster uh, representing Community and Economic Services here. Is Would one of the two of you like to take the, the first uh, stab at this? Who would like it, Bill, Paul? I'll give it a give it a go. Okay, right. so Bill, Bill Poppy will, uh, will take the, the, the discussion at this point. I at the trigger for unmuting my mic. Um, so this was uh, the previous inspector, uh, Brenda Seidel, um, who's no longer with the city. She handled this lot cleanup and was handling this case. Um, lot cleanup was necessitated um, after uh, uh, complaints were received at the property. Uh, but I've been working with the property owner, Mr. Huff now. Um, tenants had some issues in terms of garbage storage, litter, um, there were items, they have a fire pit in the back and they were burning a lot of garbage, um, some items that would be considered um, to be interior in nature. The main uh, crux of the, uh, the discrepancy, I believe, was in regards to some, some chairs that were out there. Um, there were a couple of chairs that were interior design chairs, which means they had uh, fabric on it and they were designed for, for use in either office or interior furniture that had been sitting outside. Um, so a big item of contention um, during the conversations. Um, the previous inspector, Brenda, did give them notice uh, to abate the nuisance, um, clean up things around there. That did not occur. Um, so we moved forward with a lot cleanup. Uh, I believe she conducted that in July and uh, had uh, the DPW crews remove those items. So our normal procedure, which we we do pretty much every Wednesday, we're out there today actually doing the same thing. So not on that property, but on other ones as well. So. All right. Thank you, Bill. Um, any questions for Inspector Poppy from the committee? Anybody here for this item from the public? I have a Anybody? question. Sure, Alder Gerlach, go ahead. Um, I, I just, because this is my first lot cleanup case, I just don't quite understand this. I'm reading what he wrote, and he says one of his concerns is um, no, the, the inspector didn't seem to know the difference between an indoor and outdoor chair, but then after they cleaned up, they left the chairs and the table. 
would the cleanup crew take furniture away? The cleanup crew will take whatever the inspector on site tells us to take away. Okay. Would the right. inspector ins instruct the crew to take people's furniture? If the furniture is outside Alder Gerlach and it is considered an interior design, so let's for, for instance, let's say there was a couch uh -huh. that's sitting outside. Couches are designed for interior use. If that couch sits outside, it becomes a, a, a nuisance to the public. Um, also an attractant for rats, rodents to, to burrow in there, um, things of that nature. So we don't let a couch sit outside. So that would have to be cleaned up and removed. So okay. um, that's what we have to do in this, in this situation. And let me ask you too, please. Um, so when I look at these pictures and I see what, what this gentleman wrote, do you as the inspector feel confident that this was done the way it was supposed to be done? Are you happy with the way it was at the end? I was, yeah. I looked at the case and the, the, the chairs that are in question were, in my opinion, interior design chairs that they, they were given multiple opportunities to remove those. Um, I, to him and the tenants the day before, I did make mention that those, if they are of value to them, you need to um, put them inside the garage. So they were had given multiple opportunities. Um, if they were of value to put them inside, they did not. We, we did leave the chairs that were designed for exterior use. Those were left outside the ones that are designed for interior, which like I said, they have fabric on it and things like that, that can um, lead to other issues. We didn't remove those. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Alder. Any other questions from the committee? Alder Scannell, is this your district? Yes, yes, and I just wanted to say, I knew we were not gonna get through this without using the R word. So, <laughs> it had to come from Bill. <laughs> I did that specifically for you, Randy. Well, thank I really you, really thank appreciate you. Yeah, that. No, but uh, no, I think, uh, They've done a good job, from what I can tell, and I have not heard from this constituent at all, so it doesn't appear that he's here. So, I have a motion to deny. Second. Motion by Alder Scannell, second by Alder Gerlach to deny. Any discussion on that? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. The uh, appeal is denied. And uh, we'll note everything that happens today goes to council next week, Tuesday, if uh, any party wants to show up and then speak to the full council. And now we will move to item number two, consideration with possible action on request by Dan Schmidt for an ex exemption to the provisions of section 9.41, section one, subsection D, Green Bay Municipal Code, regarding repayment of deferred special assessments on parcel 21-6668-55-1. Dave? Okay, what I'm gonna do, just quickly, I'm gonna share the screen uh, with you so you can get a feel for the parcel. Uh, for those familiar with the Far East side, Krista McAuliffe Park is located on Sitka Street uh, at the head of Sitka Street and Ontario Road. Mr. Schmidt owns the property immediately to the uh, to the west of that uh, of that park, and okay. Now we can we can see. So this would be the driveway into Mr. Schmidt's property. Uh, so Chris McAuliffe Park would be over in this area someplace. There is a uh, a parcel here on the south side of Sitka uh, that Mr. Schmidt would like to subdivide and turn into a three, uh, with a three lot CSM. So there will be three single family homes that are to be constructed on that parcel. When uh, Green Bay Water Utility constructed water main through this area uh, back in 2000, and because this parcel was vacant and undeveloped, that part, uh, the assessments for that uh, for the water main were deferred until needed um, for that parcel. Again, as I indicated, uh, Mr. Schmidt now wants to subdivide that parcel into three lots and turn that uh, into single family residential in order to record the CSM that outstanding assessment needs to be satisfied. When the property was assessed originally back in 2000, 
the original assessment value was seven thousand nine hundred and one dollars and twenty cents. Uh, the ordinance provides that a deferred assessment needs to be at the rate in effect at the time that the assessment is paid. So using current assessment rates, um, that, that $7,900 assessment has now blossomed to in excess of $33,000. So Ms. Parkus is here to uh, request an exemption or a waiver to the assessment language, uh, the ordinance, assessment ordinance language um, to reduce that, that price down. All right, thank you, Steve. Any questions for Steve committee? All right, and I uh, think Ms. Parkos, you want to, to speak to this item? Well, if in I, dance, if I, I'm if sorry. If I could, I just, that's all right. Um, if I could get a motion in a second to open the floor. Motion open the floor. Second. Motion by Alder Scannell, second by Alder Burnett to open the floor for interested parties. Those in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed, motion carried. Thank you for waiting. You just had to make it official there. The, the floor is yours, uh, Ms. Parkos. <laughs> Sorry, don't know the protocol exactly. No, no, that's right. I just want to make sure you want to speak. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, you know, Dan really forgot about the deferment. It's from 2000. At this time, I'm just looking into doing some projects over there. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them all, but we're doing the piece at some point next door too. And so we'd like to split that into three lots. Um, as I said, he had forgotten about it. And today's cost, if, if we, you know, he's willing to pay the um, assessment, plus what it costs for the city to hold it, which comes to $11,604.27. But at the 33,000, you know, it gets kind of expensive to produce these three lots and then split it into single family homes, build on them. We have since then um, looked at getting a permit, but we have to get this recorded first before we can go forward to put homes on there. And the first, permit that we have applied for is for a 2200 square foot home so we're trying to incorporate a tax base for the city of 1.2 million roughly but you know once we build on it but we have some big expenses over there currently with all the assessments because he owns a lot of that land over there so we're trying to get that down to make it feasible to build on it and sell these spec houses that's what we do that's what, we have a couple projects going right now that we're trying to get through um steve's been helping with some of these projects get going forward in Green Bay. So um, he's asking for, you know, he's proposing to pay that if that's possible and go forward with this three lot CSM. We have, we have everything done. We just need to pay the assessments to go forward to start building. Thank you. Uh, any questions for uh, Mrs. Park? Is it Miss or Mrs. Lisa? Miss. Miss, okay, perfect, thank you. Uh, Alder Scan, uh, Alder Scano. Uh, yeah, uh, if we went with the assessment that's now, couldn't that just be passed on to the buyers? I mean, that's not in this market. More divided three ways. No, not not in this market. Um, from April, the same cost to build the house now with lumber costs going up. It is eighteen thousand per home higher currently. That's how high costs are currently with building. So yeah. when I ran numbers for him, I told him either leave it and just let it sit and move on to something else, or B, this is what we try for, you know, is if we can get this just to the 11,000, we're gonna incorporate this tax base forever for the city. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we're willing, as soon as the day we can pay these assessments, we will have the, a permit pulled to start. We're gonna build all three immediately. So that's kind of you know what we thought is, is a very good trade-off to incorporate this tax base for the city. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Alder Gaylock. I uh, just want to be clear: we're moving from seven thousand something to eleven thousand something, and you explained what it was, but I need you to tell me again. You so the original assessment was seven something. Seven thousand nine hundred and one dollars and twenty cents. Okay, and then you said um, that you were adding on the cost of this that the city bore the holding to, cost. The it, holding cost. The okay. holding cost for the city would come to eleven thousand six hundred and four dollars and twenty seven cents. Excellent. And we could pay that immediately to start getting building permits going, 
and go forward. We just it's, we can't record until we get this paid. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alder. Any other questions? Anyone else here for this item? Anybody else? Anything else, uh, Ms. Parkos, before we discuss it as a committee? Um, no, it's just that it would be greatly appreciated to move forward with the project. All right. Alderman Weary, I have a question. Sure. Go ahead, Alderman. Yeah. Chairman, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Ms. Parkless, um, the assessed property will be 1.2 million. That's over three lots. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. but, yes, at least a minute, probably a minimum of 400,000 per home. That's what we are currently building at in the city of Green Bay. We have two holes up on Purple Sage. That's what we're selling all those for as well. How soon would these be completely built? Um, we would be starting the day we can pay the assessment and get it recorded. <laughs> we, the builder already went to the city and applied for a permit for a 2,200 square foot home. And I said, you're ahead of the game because okay. we can't build there yet. So we already have the plans, everything ready. Actually, there probably should be a permit sitting there at the office applied for. Okay. Thank you. So we'd have them all built. Um, we could start them all within six months, less than that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any other questions? All right. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to return to a regular order. Close the floor. Second. second by Alder Scannell, second by Alder Burnett to close the floor. Those in favor? Uh, Aye. Carried. What are your, the wishes of the committee, Alder Burnett? Um, just a, a comment that currently we're receiving some tax revenue on the undeveloped lots. If you look at $1.2 million of assessed value potentially, and the mill rate for the city is $9.46. If the lots were developed at $1.2 million total, Mike, math is correct. The tax revenue to the city for the one point two. million uh, would be over $11,000 a year. Obviously, we're collecting some revenue on the undeveloped lots, but not to that level. So a situation where, you know, long-term for neighborhood cohesiveness, adding value to the city, building more property in the city, collecting revenue for the city. For me, it seems like a pretty simple solution would be to grant what the person is requesting so these can be developed and we can start collecting revenue which would exceed you know exceed what we're receiving now on undeveloped lots thank you alderman alder scannell i uh, agree with that i uh unless uh i'm missing something steve it seems to me that's the way to be looking at it i don't know if i'm missing any piece that uh, you could point out to me, but otherwise it seems that seems logical and practical to do. You're not, and this is, this is a very unique circumstance in the fact that it's a 20 year old assessment and it's specifically an assessment for water. When we defer assessments for pavement, sanitary or storm, those are held in construction accounts that are charged against those uh, those three con uh, those three funding sources. Um, water utility does not have a provision to allow for deferred assessments because they are a PSC regulated utility, so they're very unique in our context uh, that way. So we have a construction fund that's set up uh, within the city, and. Back in 2000, as soon as that water main went in, we paid water utility and made them hold back in 2000. We have been carrying that assessment as a payable within that construction fund for the last 20 years. And what we were able to do, I was able to go back and find the bond issue back in 2000 that was used uh, to pay the, to borrow the money to pay water utility off and come up with the interest rate paid out over, uh, and actually it was a 15 year bond. So that thing has been paid off for five years already. <clears throat> we were able to, <coughs> excuse me, uh, to recalculate the amortization schedule on that bond. Uh, and that's the $11,000 value that, that Lisa provided to you. Um, 
normally the way the ordinance is written again you pay those assessments off at the assessment rate that's in effect at the time when you make the payment and that is intended to make the city whole in this case because everybody had been made whole except those of us who borrowed the money and they're asking to pay off and make the city whole just not provide above and beyond which in this case the ordinance would provide I don't know that you're missing anything, but that's the more complete version of the story. I'll make a motion to uh, make an exemption for for the whatever else there was after that <laughs> <laughs> amount. So you you would be looking to uh, grant the request of exemption to reduce the deferred assessment payable at this time to a total of eleven thousand six hundred four dollars twenty four cents. Gosh, that sounded just like me. I second it. All right. Motion by Alderman Scano, second by Alder Gerlach. Uh, is there any discussion on that? No? All right. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, this was approved 4 0. Our recommendation goes to the full council next Tuesday. And Lisa, if, if you wish to stay for the rest of the meeting, you can do that. But if you have <laughs> things that you'd rather be doing tonight, uh, you can feel free to drop off the meeting at this time. I appreciate it. I'm going back to paperwork. Thank you very much. You're very entertaining. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> I'd like to be on my couch in two hours, just so you know. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, on to item number three, consideration with pos possible action on request by Kapla Enterprises, LLC, for permission to employ city trash and recycling tipper cart at an apartment complex located at 1747, 1749 Oakdale Avenue. Steve, let's start sure. with, with you. Uh, the intent is Kapla Enterprises has requested for 1747, 49 Oakdale Avenue to move away from private collection uh, to city provided uh, recycling and trash collection. Uh, this is a two-building complex located on a single tax parcel. Uh, the dwelling units provided in the buildings are a mix of townhomes and apartments. Each building contains six dwelling units, so there's a total of 12 dwelling units on the single parcel. Uh, visitor parking is not allowed on site due to parking cons uh, space constraints. Uh, the property currently has two unscreened dumpsters for on-site collection of trash and recycling. Inspection department has been in communication with them to locate and fence the dumpsters per ordinance. The owner has requested to remove the dumpsters and provide city uh, provided trash and, and recycling tipper carts. Um, they have indicated that if approved, they will ensure proper screening of the carts as required by ordinance. Uh, they have 108 feet of street frontage for the two buildings. The 12 units will require 24 tipper carts, 12 trash, 12 recycling. Collection rules require a minimum of four feet between carts. If all 24 carts are set out, they would take up 94 feet of the 108 foot frontage, uh, including the parking lot driveway apron. Um, that's if there's only two feet of space between them. With a four foot spacing, they'd require over 140 feet of frontage. Uh, sanitation section is um, recommending that we not do this. Uh, one of the reasons that we provide, uh, city only provides sanitation tipper carts at properties with uh, no more than six residential units per lot, and this is double that. Um, Sanitation is uh, recommending against this request because it does not meet the city ordinance requirements. There's not enough room to place the carts to the curb. Uh, DPW can't go back for a second round of collection to accommodate special needs of one property owner. Uh, they would be able to, pl uh, to place the 12 trash receptacles out on a weekly basis, but not the 12 trash receptacles and the 12 recycling containers uh, during recycling weeks. And there are representatives from the Kapla uh, family here, so I'm I'm sure they would appreciate uh, when the opportunity is right uh, for you to open the floor for them. Thank you, Steve. Any any questions for Director Grenier? 
Uh, Alder Gearlock, is this your district? This is my district, and I okay. know Mr. Kapla, and I would like to hear from him, and then I have um, certainly have some things I would say. So good. I'll entertain a motion open floor. So moved. Second. Motion, motion by Alder Gearlock, second by Alderman Burnett. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Open floor. Floor is open for any parties. Just raise your hand, and I'll recognize you. Just say your name and address. All right. <laughs> name and address, please. Uh. Eric and Bob Kapla, um, 2769 Blue Spruce Drive, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, Oakdale Avenue, the 1749 uh, request. All right. All yours. So um, we are following up on a um, inspection complaint from uh, Tim, um, Tim and Say Inspection. And um, basically we're, we're lacking space to put the dumpster where it can be screened um i had asked tim based off of his thought process and knowing the plot where we could put it the open 1978 and they really didn't account for uh private collection at that time we've had the same private collection since 2005 um and we just don't know where to put it. So um, the inspector had recommended that we um, seek this uh, opportunity to, uh, for review with the committee and that's kind of where we're at. I'm open to answer any questions uh, related to it. From my experience, I think you could actually get away with eight tipper carts on the uh, garbage and six on the recycle uh, based off of uh, other properties that I have. Uh, I have a property at 1428 through 1432 Oakland, which is a 12 unit um, complex of all one bedroom apartments, which has tipper cart service uh, and has it had it the whole time I've owned it since 2014. Uh, so that's where we got the idea for lack of a better term to address this concern. Um, that another constituent has about dumpster not being screened. That's right. kind of the nickel tour, and I'm open to any questions on how to do it. Hey, Gear uh, hello, Eric. It's so good to see you. We've talked on the phone. It's almost like meeting you. You remember, right? Yep. Um, folks, I just want to tell you that I've worked with Eric Kapla. He's a very fine neighbor, and I, I'm very familiar with this property. And he's been very generous and kind with the homeowners around him. Um, I'd like to know how you can do this with not giving everybody a, a garbage cart and a recycling cart. What is your plan to do? How, how you'll make that work? Will they share? Yep, so good question. Based off of knowing what my current uh, service is through private collection, how many yards, uh, and realizing what typically gets used, that's where I benchmark that and having other properties that do have tipper cart service, knowing how much the usage is, that's how I benchmarked how much I would recommend or how many. I know the formal request was for 12 and 12. But excuse me, so what are you going to do? Are you going to like say to two, two different, you, you two will share this garbage can, you two will share this recycling can, is that what you're going to do? Um, there would be a one screened area that we would put it and we would instruct people where to put the um, garbage. I see. Right, any other questions, go, Elder? Can I, can I? Okay. Here, go ahead, uh, the, Bob, correct? Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, I got a couple questions here. Um, for, I'll make a, we've had this for 15 years and there's never been an issue with it. And I've actually known a lot of the people around here and. Uh, People have the White House next door has changed hands several times and in the, across the street. And I opened up our the, the dumpsters, the green boxes to the folks in that area that they can use them and keep the area clean. And um, I, I, I struggle to understand why, why this is a problem now. Because you know, I, we go there quite frequently and it's always picked up and, and people thank, neighbors have thanked me for letting a, put it in, bringing the garbage in when their things are uh, full at their house. And I'm not saying all the way down the street, but just in that little three, four proximity. And they really, they have family get togethers or whatever, the holidays, they, they thank, thank me many times. 
Uh, Eric and I wear different hats in, the, in our business. Um, I'm kind of a more boots on the ground and cut the grass and keep it cleaned up around there. And um, I struggled to understand, to help understand why there's an issue in after all these years, because it's, you know, and then there's some, some dumpsters in the city since this has came up, I look around, they're very close to the street, very close to the sidewalk. Um, I, I just, I, I'm just kind of questioning why, why is this an issue? Well, and to build on that, Alder Weary, can you give insight as to if there was a period when this didn't have private service when it was built and it got changed over? Or has it always had um, private service? Good question. And for that, I'm going to defer to Director Grenier. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say that this prop, uh, property has likely had private service uh, for a very long time because of the number of units that are on there. And, and myself, I, I, we go by there, when I say we, I should say me, probably minimum, if I go, if it's three days goes by, that's a lot. Most times it's every other day. Um, I, I tend to it long before this issue came up because I, you know, it's, uh, I always say that I, who wants to live in a, in a junkyard? And if there's the dumpsters heavy, when I say heavy, if stuff gets in there and it's not compact, I, I pick it up, I make sure the doors are shut. Um, and then the, the people have been great about it. You know, I mean, they, the place, and uh, we stuck a lot of money in this property. That, like, and uh, I know Steve, I'm sure you've been, I know you, I met you before. Um, I'm sure you've seen, put eyes on it and the turnaround in this property in the last 15 years, I can't help but, think you would agree is we completely turned it around. I mean, we just put all six brand new decks on, on it. We have literally, when it goes for rent, uh, Eric's wife, she's in charge of the, um, the renting and the phone literally rings off the wall. I mean, so we take pride in it. And uh, I'm just from the, obviously you guys have the final say so, but I, I, I fail to understand why that dumpster's a problem. All right, thank you, Mr. Kappa. Alder Gaelic. No, I thank you. I, I walk past there almost every day. I walk my dog past the um, apartment building at least several times a week. And I will tell you that it has bothered me. I've never said a word to anyone, but it has bothered me that these dumpsters are visible. And so and there have been a few times, I'm afraid, when it really did look bad. Not always. But there have been a few times when I thought, oh, my God, it really did look like a junkyard. But for the most part, no. So my question is, it seems to me that um, what the inspector is asking you to do is to just screen these dumpsters so that they're not seen. Is that what is that the problem? Are you saying there's not room for them, Eric? I don't quite understand. So good. Maybe I didn't um, explain that well. So with the where it's located, we if we go back further to meet the 20 feet ordinance requirement, we lose stalls that are allocated to tenants. So right now, if you build a 12 unit, you're supposed to have one stall for every four stalls for visitors. So four visitor stalls plus the one for each bedroom. This should have had like 26 stalls of parking if it was built today at minimum. It's got 22 and that represents the same number of bedrooms. So it all the parking stalls are used. Mm -hmm. We go back into that we don't even have parking. Um, it was just not a great uh, site plan when they did it at the time. And this dumpster has been in the same place. And if we screen it, let's say put a um, some type of uh, construction around it, it blocks the right of way. Um, and that's not acceptable either because you need to be able to see down Oakdale uh, mm -hmm. effectively. So may I ask uh, Director Grenier, is what about uh, the the um, alternative they're proposing to have uh, to just put the the carts in the back and just instruct the residents this is where you put your garbage this is where you put your recycling if number one is filled you put it in number two can that work? Um. It's a little unorthodox. I will say that it it's not. It's not the typical way that we do things. Generally speaking, we um, we provide a cart for each living unit. Um, 
Now, with that in mind, I don't. DPW doesn't go around and ensure that a fourplex is putting four carts out every week. If that property owner is doing something similar to this, where they have all four carts cooperatively located uh, and, and instructing their residents to fill cart one until it's full, then fill cart two, and they only fill three carts during the week and wheel three instead of four out, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't know about that. We, okay. Um, so I guess under a situation like this, if I'm understanding uh, Mr. Kapla correctly, uh, they aren't requesting 12 and 12, they would be requesting eight and six, and it would be his responsibility as the property owner to make sure he's providing proper sanitation and recycling opportunities for his tenants. Now, how he does that is up to him. I don't know that DPW is going to be in the business of, of regulating him to that level. Um, I think it's a unique approach. But his alder will be walking by every day and checking on him. <laughs> I realize this is a good, a good um, alternative, and I think that the Kepler's really have, uh, you know, they're really good property owners. They've done a good job, and I'd like to see them at least given a chance to try this. Appreciate it. Any other questions, Elder Scano? The floor is still open, right? Yes. yes. Yep. Uh, so I just want to make sure I understand. If if we made some kind of exception where you could keep the dumpsters where they are right now, any screening you would put right there would be an obstruction to the right of way. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And, and to um provide additional information that I thought when Steve was uh, talking was we own a six unit at 967 Bell um, that we use a similar approach. Uh, that's a six unit where we, uh, we take out the garbage weekly. And I know based off of usage at that six unit, we never fill everything up uh, there. So um, it's been done at other locations. I have about five different properties to benchmark that have tipper cart service. Uh, so that's how I got my projections. All right, thank you. Anything else, Alder Scano? All right, Alder Burnett, any questions? Anything else, uh, Mr. Kapla, either one of you, before we discuss it at committee? I don't think so. I don't think All so. Right. I got a question for Lynn Alderman. Um, well, Alderman. you can ask me the question and <laughs> go ahead. Well, I was just wanting to see that you, I didn't know you lived there. Lynn, but I mean, you've seen it. How long have you been in the neighborhood and you've, you've seen a drastic change in what we've done there? It's up to you, Lynn. I'll just... I've been in the neighborhood less than two years. Um, it, it's been almost two years since I moved in. I live about six blocks from you. Okay. from your, And um, so I wouldn't know what things were like more than two years ago. Okay. But I just have been, I've worked with Eric in the past with uh, a fence issue. And I just know that um, he's been he's been a very good neighbor. Thank you. All right. Not seeing anybody else. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to reach. Motion by Scano. Second by Burnett. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed. Motion carried. Uh, all right. Just any questions for staff? Hold there, Scano. Question for staff. Uh, Director Grenier is the only objection to uh, providing them with uh, tipper carts, the number of car carts, or is there another reason to object to that? Well, technically right now there are 12 dwelling units on a single parcel and the, and the city's policy is uh, we provide garbage and recycling to, uh, units of six or less. So this would be an exception to that. Uh, you'd be granting the exception to uh, to the six unit limit on a parcel. Um, and that that's pretty much it. Okay, yeah, they... Uh... <clears throat> Start making exemptions. You never know where you're gonna end up. But um, I don't know, This it seems practical. I think it's practical. <laughs> But uh, I think it then becomes an inspection issue. It wouldn't be DPW as far as if we issued the, was it six and eight, that the, the area is kept up appropriately. 
Um, I don't know. I, I'll, I'll, I'll defer to Alda Gerlach a little bit here. I, I would move that we make this exemption as requested. And uh, I don't know, is it possible to do something like put a time limit on it and reconsider it in a year or something like that? Sure. No? Yes. Okay. Unless uh, Director Grinney sees any reason why we can't. Uh, I don't know that uh, a time limit would necessarily give you anything outside of to bring it back in a year's time uh, to review how things are working. Mm -hmm. um, if you're worried instead that it's not working, I think that will manifest itself pretty quickly through the inspection department and we're going to hear about it. So I think um, a no news is good news approach might be the better way to go. Either you grant the exemption or you don't. And if you grant the exemption, everything is fine until you hear that it's not. All right. Uh, well, we do have a motion right now. Is there a second before we proceed? A second. Uh, and that's for eight garbage, six recycle. Alder Gerlach? I believe so. Okay. Uh, Alder Burnett, you seconded it, and you have the floor, and then we'll go to you, Alder Scannell. Yeah, thank you. I do, <clears throat> do feel for the property owners here. They owned the property for 20 years or 15 years and never really had an issue. Uh, I, I did an aerial view of the property and the, the position of the dumpster is unfortunate. It's by sidewalk, but it's just the way it was built in 78. Uh, they raise a good point. We don't want to obstruct uh, uh, the traffic. Um, we don't want to limit the amount of parking spaces on the property. It's a kind of it's odd the way that the the lot is is situated. I, I don't know where else you could put it. So I think here we need to be a little flexible on a property owner who, as far as I'm concerned, to the best of my knowledge, we haven't received any other complaints, at least that I'm aware of. Um, so I think it's worth looking into, and I agree with Director Grenier, putting time limits. I, I like that idea when Alder Gearlock first mentioned it, but then I thought really it's up to the, the landlord here to make sure that the tenants are complying with the eight and the six. And if more are needed or what not, whatever, then the onus is on them to communicate that, work out a solution. And if they don't, then the inspection department will be getting calls, I'm guessing. So it's tough. It's tough all the way around, but given the history of this particular property and what they just presented, I, I see no reason why not um, be thinking in, in gray right now, rather than just black and white, yes or no, we can we can be a little more creative in what we do. So I support the motion, obviously. All right, thank you. And the way I have it right now is that the motion is to approve eight garbage, six recycle, and there is no year review. That, that's what I have right now. That was just being tossed around. Okay, Alder Scannell. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't think a time limit really works. Once you make the exception, you've opened the Pandora's box, if that's what it's gonna turn out to be. So, uh, uh, but this is, you know, every situation is unique. And I think to just be uh, set in a way without being able, having the flexibility to, I mean, that's our job to be practical and flexible and make things work. Uh, so I, I, I think I'm gonna support this. This, this seems practical to a, a situation where actually whatever decision we make is gonna be problematical, I think. Uh, uh, all the options, I think this is probably the most uh, practical one. So, I support right, Thank it. you, Alder. And we have a motion and a second to approve the eight garbage and six recycle here. Any other discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, that item carries. It's been approved. It'll go to council next Tuesday for final uh, approval. And... All right. Chairman Weary, I'm going to step away for just one minute. My camp, uh, my uh, I, I will be listening, but I just wanted for the sake of quorum to get your ice creams ready. No, no, not that. Call me. <laughs> okay, one moment. All, all the way, if I may say, I I did step away too, but I was listening, so I didn't really think I was not part of the meeting. So, all right. if I've ever gone where I won't be part of the meeting, I'll let you know. Perfect. Thank you. All right, let's move on to item number four. Consideration for the possible action.
and then request subdivision for a sidewalk study on the east side of North Huron Road from Humboldt to South 5457 Interchange State Highway, I guess that would be. Yes. Go ahead, uh, Director. Okay. Um, included in the packet, we provided an email chain uh, that has a variety of iterations to it. Uh, so emails that have gone back and forth between residents within that uh, Eaton Heights subdivision, uh, Alderdorf and myself. And uh, for those of you who are unaware, Eaton Heights subdivision is located uh, just north of Humboldt Road. So if you're familiar with where the new quick trip went in across Huron from fire station number seven, that's the Eaton Heights subdivision. There is sidewalk on the west side of Huron Road, uh, but not on the east side uh, between State Trunk Highway 5457 and Humboldt. So those residents uh, who are in the Eaton Heights subdivision find themselves having to cross over Huron Road at, um, I believe that's Barrenwood Drive, where it, uh, where it comes out uh, onto, onto Huron. Um, I'm gonna scroll up there really quickly uh, to see if I can give you some semblance of, of what we're talking about here. Okay, so this northeast corner of the of the two county trunks uh, is the new quick trip. Uh, right here is fire station number seven, uh, and this is the area that we're talking about uh, with the residents. So this is Watercrest Drive uh, that that comes out to Huron Road. Now, if if you've ever driven out there, you're on a hill, so you're elevated. Uh, and then that drops down as you head to the north. So that's what we call a crest vertical uh, in the alignment. And that creates vision problems, making this crossing very unsafe. Uh, we originally started talking to the residents. They had requested a crosswalk there, and that's something we definitely do not recommend. It's a four-lane facility. It's concrete. It's a county trunk highway. It's posted 35, but often driven well over that. Uh, and with that crest vertical exacerbating those conditions, that just makes for a very dangerous mix. A, a, a pedestrian crosswalk at this location is something we can't support. Um, here at the stop condition, this is a four-way stop, when you have that stop condition and great sight lines, that's a great place for a crosswalk. But as the residents have indicated to us, you can see there's sidewalk down the west side, but no sidewalk on the east side. Uh, there was a contemplation uh, with the properties in this location that when the, uh, when the subdivision was originally approved, these are commercial properties as opposed to the residentials on the north side, um, the two parcels here were required to have a pedestrian pathway to allow residents from uh, within the residential area of the subdivision to gain access to the corner of um, Huron and Humboldt. Now, very recently, with the expansion at the Quick Trip, they have put a small uh, walkway in off of this corner of the parking lot, and what that does is that allows pedestrians to get up and gain access to the parking lot, but because there's not a designated pedestrian pathway, uh, we now have residents walking through the parking lot of a Quick Trip uh, in order to gain access to the corner where the crosswalk and walkways are. So the residents have reached out and through Alderdorf have requested that a sidewalk study be performed uh, to, to, to determine whether or not cro uh, sidewalks would be necessary from the intersection of Humboldt and Huron, north along Huron, all the way up to the 5457 interchange location. 
Uh, again, at this point, because it's signalized, you have stop conditions with pedestrian island refuge, and we have actually been in contact with the Department of Transportation. Uh, they are looking at doing some uh, pedestrian crosswalk uh, improvements associated with other points along this uh, along the interchange here um, in the near future. So that would provide a signalized crossing for the pedestrian crosswalk here, sidewalk on the west side, possibly sidewalk down the east side, depending on what the sidewalk study shows, and then again another stop controlled pedestrian crosswalk uh, with the possibility for refuge. Um, at the intersection. So uh, I believe I saw earlier, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can see uh, what's going. Yes, uh, I believe that's Ms. Haves who's here tonight. Uh, she is one of the residents of the, of the subdivision requesting the sidewalk study. So we do have somebody I believe who wants to speak tonight. Motion open the floor. All right. The motion by Elder Scano, second by Elder Gerlach to open the floor. The those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. The floor is open. Okay, just get your name and address, and then the floor is yours. Hi, I'm Jackie Hafes. I live at 926 Baronwood Drive, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, thank you for inviting me tonight. Um, I do feel that this sidewalk would be a huge benefit to myself, my neighbors. Um, if you have been in this area, you do know how traffic fly down here on. I was passed by a semi truck going at least 50 uh, a couple weeks ago. So for me to cross the road or my two children to cross the road um, makes me a little scared. The option to go through Quick Trip is wonderful if you're going to Quick Trip, but there are no sidewalks on Humboldt for me to get then to the crosswalk to cross at Huron and Humboldt to get onto the sidewalk on the west side. So I don't really find that that's a safe option either. Um, for us on our sidewalk up through, so Watercrest and then turns into Barrenwood and then around the next corner turns into Satellite, which then connects with Spartan, which is by Highland Towies, if you're familiar with the area. There's no sidewalks on that road either. So for us to have a safe area to go for walks, go for bike rides, things like that, um, I just, I don't feel we have an option. Uh, the past couple of years, my kids take the bus to get to school and our bus stops have been uh, on Bay Highland, which is one street north of us. Um, and I've had to contact the district to get their bus stop changed because it's not safe for my kids to walk um, from Bay Highlands to Watercrest to get to our house um, with having to cross Huron. So um, luckily the district has been very calm that way to switch for the safety of my kids. Um, I do appreciate you doing the sidewalk study to see if it would be a good option for us over here on the east side. Um, and then with the addition of Quick Trip, there is more traffic, I feel, coming from 5457, um, more semis. And like I mentioned before, they are, they are not going the speed limit. They are going quite fast. Um, so I do appreciate you looking into this and, and considering putting a sidewalk in. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Hayes? All right. Well, anyone else here for this item? No. I want to entertain a motion to uh, close the floor. Motion to close the floor. Second. Motion by Alder Scannell, second by Alder Burnett to close the floor. Those in favor? Aye. All right, opposed. Motion carried. Barb, I think Alder Dorf, I think you're here. You want to, yes. I think this Thank is your you. district, right? Yeah. You know, everything that Jackie says is true. And I would certainly support a sidewalk being put in. Uh, the, I have a question as, to who would pay for the sidewalk, and, and if Director Grenier thinks that we are going to get some pushback from the people that would be asked to pay for it, that's that's my only concern. Other, otherwise, this is a great idea. We're going to have to we're going to have to take a look at the particulars out there. Um, I have a feeling it's going to be a mixed bag. Um, when we look at sidewalks and whose maintenance responsibilities, uh, not, well, not, not only maintenance, but also installation responsibilities, those are, um, a lot of that has to do with availability and contact to that sidewalk. So what I mean by that, Quick Trip and the, 
I believe that's a condo property on the south side of um, Watercrest Drive. I think it's by the bunkers, maybe. Uh, who owns it, it is irrelevant to it. me. It's it's okay. the property itself. There are sidewalks, I believe, on both sides of Watercrest at that point. So the condominium property has direct access to the sidewalk on Watercrest, which would then connect to the sidewalk on Huron. So it would be expected for them, that's no different than any other corner lot right. uh, in the city, they would be required to pay for the installation and all maintenance, so snow plowing, crack sidewalk repairs, that kind of thing. Similar uh, approach with the quick trip uh, on the corner of Huron and Humboldt, their driveways go directly across it, they have direct access. Now, as you get up to the north side of Watercrest, now we're talking about houses which don't necessarily front onto Huron, that's their backyard, so they don't have direct access. As a matter of fact, some of those houses on Aldine Court have fences in the backyard. They do. Okay. So in situations like that, it has been a past practice of the city that that <coughs> sidewalk is required for the greater common good. Uh, the city has absorbed some of those costs. So we're going to have to take a look at this. Number one, we're going to complete the sidewalk study, and based off of what I'm hearing from Ms. Haves and, and some of the conversations that we've followed or been engaged with, um, I also, this is my neighborhood, okay? I only live about... Uh, two miles south uh, uh, on here on road. So I travel this quite frequently. Uh, very, very familiar with the issues out there. And I do often see um, school age kids walking in that grassy terrace on the east side. So we do have to perform the sidewalk study. Um, so it's a procedural step, but I'm not, I won't be a whole bit surprised if the sidewalk study comes back and supports that sidewalks are necessary. Uh, so in the event that the sidewalks are determined to be necessary, then we will have to do a parcel by parcel uh, evaluation to find out who would be the responsible party for those sidewalks. So I, I don't think it's, it's cut and dried any, in any one fashion. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Thank you, Alderdorf. Any other questions or a motion, Alder Scannell? Motion to approve the sidewalk study. I don't know why we wouldn't uh, do the study. It certainly seems there's a need, so we should get all the information we need to make a decision on what to do up there. So I motion second. to approve the sidewalk study. All right, we have a motion by Elder Scannell, second by Elder Gerlach to approve the sidewalk study. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. All right, I'll go to council next Tuesday and uh, we'll go ahead from there. Thank you for attending the safes. All right, let's move on to the next item. Number five, consideration of possible action on request to rescind or reduce the long grass weed compliance cutting charge of $178.38 on invoice 133126 for Rexford Buxton at 311 North Oakland Avenue. Uh, director. Okay, on May 29th, we did an inspection uh, of the property, property was uh, rechecked on June 1st and tagged, remobilized back out to the site on June the 3rd, uh, at which time the property was cut. Um, invoice was issued to the property owner uh, which showed three quarters of an hour for labor and equipment plus the administrative parcel charge uh, and tax for a total of $178.30. Uh, received a communication back uh, from Alder Johnson indicating that the property owner felt that the charges were excessive uh, because it only takes uh, the property owner about 15 minutes to cut the lawn. Uh, I did reach out to my operations division um, to ask some questions about the time. Uh, received information back from the street superintendent who also is the weed commissioner. Uh, he provided me with pictures for the property and uh, stated that according to the time stamp, they were on site for 16 minutes plus travel time to and from the site, six minutes, 30 seconds each way. So six minutes, 30 seconds is 13 minutes. Uh, plus uh, 16 minutes at 
two people on the crew, which comes out to a total of 32, that's 45 minutes worth of labor. Um, that might be part of the confusion. Uh, so it was about 15 minutes worth of labor on site, uh, but there were two people on, uh, on that crew, uh, and then 45 minutes worth of, uh, or the, the 13 minutes worth of, of travel time for a total of, uh, of 45 minutes. Uh, so this was cut, ta or tagged, cut, and billed consistent with our billing practices, um, and staff does not feel that the, that the charge levied was excessive. Right. Any on this one, Mr. Buxton here. He is Otherwise not Alder go. Johnson. Alder Johnson is. Yep, that was my next uh, Alder Johnson. Yeah, I, I see that there's a phone, an unidentified phone number uh, on the line. I don't know if that's if that's no, him that, or not. That that's Attorney Chavez. Okay. Um, so so yeah, this was a request that came to me on behalf of the resident. Um, I told him that a place uh, I believe it was his intent to join us and. and uh, because he's not here, I'm wondering if maybe we could just hold this uh, and I can follow up with him determine if he can make the next meeting. Um, I think obviously Director Grenier's synopsis from a staff perspective is helpful. Uh, the feedback that I, I received um, from the resident was uh, that was maybe a little bit um, different, not different, but some additional information is that um, he was noticed, I believe, on Friday and that he did say that he cut his backyard on Sunday, did not have an opportunity to get to the front yard. Uh, he indicated someone from the city showed up on Monday, but then left. So I presume, Director Grenier, that that was the, like the follow-up inspection, just to be sure that, that the problem was still outstanding. Uh, and, and, and so, again, just from the, the resident's perspective, he said that he had already cut the backyard. Um, and that's why he felt that the time was excessive uh, given the situation. So not sure if the committee, I mean, it, if we could hold it, I think it would at least give the, the resident an opportunity uh, to come to the next meeting. And if he's not there at the next meeting, then I think obviously we'll have to proceed with an action, but that would be my request at this time. Well, committee, any motions or questions for me? Um, Go ahead, Builder Scannell. Is the lawn is cut now? all of it yes this was this happened back in may i believe or oh, early may early. okay and there hasn't been any problems since uh, not that i'm aware of but i would have to refer to to staff if there have been additional complaints and i i, I don't have information relative to <clears throat> whether or not there are additional complaints uh this is the only one that's been contested Okay, well, I'll, I'll make a motion to hold this and we can get more, more information all the way around. All right, we have a motion by Elder Scannell to hold this uh, until the next meeting. And is there a second on that? Second by Elder Burnett. Any discussion? Those in favor? All right. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We'll hold it. Number six, consideration of possible action to direct some of the public works to present to the Improvement Service Committee a few options for more effective downtown snowbank management. It's requested that examples be provided from the 10 largest municipalities in the state. Alder Johnson and Scannell, team. Uh, well, which one would you like at first? Well, who's, the brain, who's the brawn? I... <laughs> <laughs> or the beauty, I don't know. You could be the brain, uh, Randy will be the, the beauty. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I'm comfortable with this one if it's simply a referral to staff to come back with the information that we've requested. Um, I, I think the, the importance of this has um, really risen to the forefront um, because of, of the number of businesses that are relying on curbside pickup as a result of the pandemic. Um, I know that this has been an issue that I've talked to staff about in the past, uh, and I've re received their explanation as to why we do it the way that we do it. Um, but I think given, given some of the challenges and demands that we have being placed in our small business community, I think it's time for us to revisit um, the, the strategy with how we, we manage downtown snow services. All right, uh, anything to add to that, Elder Scannell? Yeah, th this has come up before uh, a few years back, uh, a number of uh, people living downtown as well as some of the businesses expressed a, a concern about, you know, we got the snow banks 
separating. You got to climb over snow banks to get from the street to the sidewalk. Uh, and we kind of looked at that and uh, speaking with Dr. Grenier again, I'm trying to remember, we, we, we kind of came up with, we would let them, you, there's going to be a fee to businesses could kick into, I can't remember exactly how we went. I, I should have wrote that down every time I talk to you. I never have a pen. I'm a lousy note taker. Anyway, uh, uh, the way I see this is if, if we have the information about how other cities do it, and then we have, uh, we bring in the, uh, some residents and, and concerned uh, uh, businesses and we sit together and we figure out, um, can we come up with some other way to do solve this problem uh, or not? And what would that be? Um, that's where I'd like to see us head out. So let's get the information then let's get the vested parties together and hash out a, a practical solution for everybody if we can do that. Thanks. All right. Committee, any, any questions for the elders or a motion? I would uh, move that we uh, refer this to staff and ask them to come up to propose a plan. Second. All right. We have a motion by Elder Gerlach, second by Elder Scannell to refer this to staff uh, as requested. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion carried. Number seven, consideration with possible action to look at the layout plan of the Green Bay Metro boat launch to see if there are potential renovations or updates to enhance potential renovations updates to enhance deficiencies of the facility. Also, to take a look at Brown County boat launch trace lift, including the potential vacant Eagles Nest location on Nicolay Drive, as to how they may affect or enhance the Green Bay Metro boat launch location. Alderman Stroyer. Is he online with us? No? Steve, any contact with Alder Stroyer? Uh, I have not, but I, I, I believe the attorney's office has. Uh, I'm going to take just a very brief moment uh, to give a little bit of context to this and then explain why we're making the recommendation we have. Um, boating facilities at Metro, City Deck, and uh, Lights Park. There is some overlap between ourselves and the Parks Department but really what that overlap is. The Parks Department manages those facilities. We have heavy equipment that's able to put the in-water facilities in the water, okay? So that's really where our involvement ends. We put those boat launches in, but operation of a boat launch, boat launch facility at Metro is Parks responsibility. We put the floating docks in when the water levels allow us to do that at city deck, but managing city deck as a park is park's responsibility. When Alder Stoyer brought this forward as a communication at council last, uh, last time, uh, he indicated he wasn't sure if this should go to INS and parks. It came to INS. We're recommending that it go to parks. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a long explanation, but now you know why. Thanks. All right. Well, committee, what do you, what do you wish? Uh, refer to parks. Make a motion to refer to parks. Okay. Motion by Elder Scannell, second by Elder Burnett. Refer to parks. Any discussion on that? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. That is referred to parks. Number eight, consideration with possible action to review zoning code 13.541 pertaining to fence location and heights in order to seek updates on revisions to increase the efficiency. Destroyer. Likewise, this one was debated by Alder Sawyer as to whether it should come to INS or go to the Plan Commission, and we're suggesting that this should be referred to Plan Commission. Motion to refer to the Plan Second. Motion by Alder Spinal, second by Alder Burnett to refer this item to Plan Commission. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That item is referred to Plan Commission. Mr. Chairman? Point yes. of view, please. I'm going to have to get out of uh, Civic Clerk and come back in. It's my agenda's messed up, so I just want you to know. I'll be right okay. back. Sounds good. Number nine, consideration of possible action request to review policy for reimbursement to property owners who repaired tree damage sidewalk. Referred uh, to staff August 12th, Improvement Service Committee meeting, and to bring modified policy back. Um, it's also tied in with number 10, obviously. Um, I brought this back from council. I really had just wanted number 10 back, and I didn't notice that they were kind of both put on here. 
Um, I don't have any issues with number nine of how you handled that. Well, actually, we didn't. It was referred to staff. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, I apologize. We did not get <laughs> the drafts out to you with everything else that's going on. And we've been, we lost a couple of staff members due to medical uh, over the past two weeks. So things have been kind of nuthouse around here. Um, I did finish a draft, and I'm happy to share that with you tonight, um, especially as, as far as uh, what the changes um, to the policy are. So very quickly, I'm going to share my screen with you. Uh, so if you've seen the sidewalk letter that we send out uh, to residents when we order sidewalks repaired or installed, um, the policy is actually, the letter was derived from the policy. Uh, so I can definitely send this out. This can be, become part of uh, the meeting minutes. Uh, and if you choose not to do anything tonight, uh, if you want some time to consider this or, or, or do something with it, um, I'll definitely include this. But essentially, when sidewalks are deemed, new sidewalks are deemed necessary or existing sidewalks to be found in need of repair, uh, the orders are sent out by way of a resolution from the Common Council. That resolution provides 60 days for residents to complete the work. Upon receipt of the orders, the residents have a couple of options. Option number one is do nothing. After that 60 day time frame uh, expires, the city's contractor will complete the repairs uh, or installation and send an invoice to the property owner. The property owner can complete the repairs themselves. Uh, we indicate it has to be completed within a 60 day notice uh, period. It doesn't necessarily have to be. We need to receive a, a, a response back from the, the property owner that they are doing it. Uh, in order to qualify for property owner to be complete the repair by themselves, that has to be by them not by family, not by a friend, not by a neighbor. You have to do the work. Um, you have to notify us that it's been completed, uh, obtain all necessary permits, signing and barricade, and complete the work in accordance with the city standards. Um, we will inspect that work uh, when you're done. If it's found to be unacceptable, you'll e either have to remove it or replace it, or the city will come in and use our contractor uh, and then bill you for that. Or option three, you can hire a licensed sidewalk builder. Um, again, we indicate it has to be done within the 60 day notice period, or you have to notify us within that 60 days that you've hired somebody and they're going to do it. Uh, we do provide a list of the sidewalk builders. Uh, they do have to come in for all necessary permits. Uh, they have to complete all the signing and barricading uh, and construct up to city standards. Uh, the contractor works directly with the property owner and that's how the payment is made. If everything is, if anything is found to be unacceptable, it has to be removed and replaced up to city standards. If not, the city will replace it and bill the property owner back. Um, we do provide, this is something that's new within the last couple of years that we're providing some repair options that not everything have, has to be replaced. And here we get to the crux of, of the, the discussion. If there are sidewalk panels that are replaced by the property owner, either by themselves or through the hiring of a licensed sidewalk builder, which were marked as city responsibility, there is a process whereby that property owner can apply for reimbursement for city responsibility damaged sidewalk. Um, They'll go ahead and complete that work either by themselves or using a licensed sidewalk builder. If the work is deemed to be acceptable, the property owner then submits an invoice to the Department of Public Works for sidewalk credit. The invoice has to state the area replaced in square feet and the amount due. And here we get to the strike through. Uh, this policy as drafted, and this policy has been in effect for longer than I've been with the city, which is uh, 13 years. Uh, the amount due shall be calculated at a rate of $1 per square foot. Again, when this policy was first adopted, uh, the intent of that policy was to provide reimbursement for the amount of the materials used and incorporated into the work, not necessarily for the labor. Right, wrong, or indifferent, that was the thought process at the time. So what we have proposed as an alternative, uh, revisiting this in the, in the context of current day, 
the reimbursement shall be the actual cost of materials if the property owner completes the work themselves or the invoice cost if the property owner hires a licensed sidewalk builder. In all cases, the reimbursement shall not exceed the rate established under the current year sidewalk construction and repair contract. And that's the only change that we've made to the existing policy. Thank you, Director. Um, up to the committee, if you want to, you know, wait and put this on the next agenda. I don't think it's pressing, but it doesn't seem like a major revision, so I'm, I'm fine with moving ahead with it. Whatever your, whatever you guys wish, ladies. Yeah, go ahead, Randy. Uh, as it is, I think that's fine. You know, I mean, we've kind of talked about this, and and uh, that's basically what we did, and I think this covers it well. I'm just curious about. I guess I didn't pay enough attention before when we said that the property owner could do the work that they were actually physically doing the work not hiring somebody um but they have to do it not a neighbor not a, i mean do, why do we care uh, well How not necessarily if if you're doing the work in front of your property that's one thing if somebody else is doing the work in front of your property then they have to be a licensed sidewalk builder uh that's it yes okay. So you have the option. You can always hire somebody, but if you hire right. somebody, right. they have to be a licensed sidewalk builder. Right, right. But it just can't. But if you if you did it yourself physically, uh, neighbors could help. Yes, as long as you're, you're willing to stand up and say you did the work. Work. Yep. Yep. Okay. But not just a neighbor could do it because it'd be against the ordinance to have an unlicensed person doing it. With, uh, that's not the property owner again I, I i don't necessarily know that part of it that's the way it's been since long before i got here okay because i mean the, the important thing is that it meets specs and whoever does it does it and i'm not this isn't a big deal i don't think it really matters i don't know uh i'm just curious i i, I didn't quite pick up before that we were actually talking about the property owner physically doing it and then these other restrictions it, it just struck me as kind of interesting curious but uh i'm for uh, th this is fine as it is i'm all for this i i would make a motion to um adopt second there's a motion by elder scandal second by elder burnett <clears throat> to adopt the changes as read <clears throat> under discussion no discussion those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. All right. Number 10, consideration with possible action and request by Matthew Johnson for additional compensation related to the replacement of tree damage sidewalk, 1420 Frank Street, referred back from Common Council August 18th. Um, director, following our guideline there, uh, this resident who contracted somebody out would be paid up to, uh, what was it, 775, I think, is where we had quarterly. And I think that's where just a little confusion was. I think um, there was a, he thought that only because he didn't do it, he wasn't getting reimbursed, but <laughs> obviously that's not the case. Correct. Now, the, <laughs> the, un, under the policy currently in effect, um, he would only be eligible for a dollar per square foot, regardless of whether he right. did it or he hired a licensed sidewalk builder. Because you've taken the action on the previous item, and that's, that is why the city, uh, the, the the city attorney's office, um, had recommended that we take them in the order that we did, um, because you've made that that recommendation to change the policy. That gives you a little bit more latitude, I guess, uh, in in looking at this exemption request. Um, the property owner replaced two panels of sidewalk, I believe, which was. Um, gave them the ability to request reimbursement for up to $50, and they spent $200 per sidewalk panel, uh, which was $8 a square foot, and they're getting reimbursed at a rate of $1 per square foot. Uh, again, during the, the 2020 contract, um, our sidewalk replacement cost is $775. So under the new policy, they would be eligible for $775 per square foot, uh, which is a lot more than a dollar. Yeah, and I, and I think that's fair. I guess 
I would uh, caution people who think maybe they're getting a, a better deal. <laughs> we, we do get good rates, I think, with the city to replace it. We're, we're seeing right here, <laughs> he hired someone out because his neighbor had replaced all of their sidewalk and to keep going two cakes, they thought they'd get a pretty good deal, which maybe was a good deal, but not as good as, as we got. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine then as laid out to reimburse them, the, you know, the up to 775. We don't want to go above what we would have paid. So a motion to place on file? Second. Is that the right motion? What what, what was that motion, Alder? Receiving place on file? No, I think what you'd be looking, I think what Alder Weary would be looking for, or the resident would be looking for, would be to approve the request for additional compensation from $1 per square foot to $7.75 per square foot. Okay, but, well, but we, we already did that though, right? Do we, we just need to do it No, again? we adopted a, a general policy statement in the previous item. This is a specific right. application of it in before, the the policy, item, before the policy becomes effective. Oh, okay, we can, okay, okay I get it. In the okay. future, this will be administrative, right? We won't right. see this. Oh, the uh, city attorney Chavez is on the line. Oh, okay. Oh, go ahead, attorney. Uh, the one thing I was going to add is that when you approve it, um, you should approve it um, up to the 775 in accordance with the, a policy uh, just adopted. Um, and obviously it would be contingent on council approving it, um, but this way the new policy is the one being processed under. Better right with you, Alder Scannell? I think you yes. had... Yes. Okay. And then Alder Gearlock, was that a second? And, That's uh, good. Any discussion on that? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Number 11, consideration of possible action and request by Department of Public Works to award a professional engineering service contract to McMahon Associates, Inc. for hydrologic hydraulic analysis for Storm Basin 342 and 342A, Mason Street to Timberland Drive, Sandstone Place to Crestwood Drive to investigate potential high water complaints during intense rain events around the Count Creek Parkway, Shepherd's Path, Sorensen Drive, and East Sorensen Drive in the amount of 33400 Rector. Now we get into the faster moving portion of our agenda where I believe it's going to take Alder Weary longer uh, to read the agenda <laughs> item than it will for us to describe what's going on. Um, with the next several what we're, uh, agenda items, we're requesting um, approval of some consultant services contract. Here uh, in the LeCount Drive, or LeCount Creek Parkway, Shepherd's Pass, Sorensen, and East Sorensen Drive areas, again, areas on the far west side that are subject to uh, flooding during high intensity rainfall events, we're simply requesting that you approve us uh, to contract with Mc, uh, McMahon Associates to complete the uh, the stormwater study in that basin. Uh, this is similar to work that has been performed uh, and McMahon's done a lot of stormwater work for us. Um, similar projects where they've done uh, the work on Farland, the work on Elizabeth, the lift stations down on Broadway, uh, things of that nature. So again, we're, we're happy with, uh, with, with McMahon. These are two of the next uh, drainage basins on our priority list to handle flooding. So we're, we're asking for uh, approval to contract with a with a consultant to help augment our engineering services. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Alder Scannell, second by Alder Gerlach to approve. Any discussion? Question. Sure, go ahead, Alder Gerlach. Just because there's a price tag on it, I just want to always make sure this money is budgeted for or bonded for, the money's there. The, yes, this comes out of the consultant services or contractual the contractual services budget line item in the storm water utility budget. Okay, good. Thanks. All right. Any other discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I think we lost Alder Burnett here along the way. I didn't see him drop out. Sure, he'll be he'll be back. <laughs> okay, number. 12, consideration of possible action on request by Department of Public Works to award a professional engineering service contract to McMahon Associates Inc. Okay. For a hydrologic hydraulic analysis for Stone Basin 5 one including all sub-basins with specific emphasis to look at the high water issues during intense rain events along East Shore Circle, East Shore Drive, and Irwin Avenue to dams 
and Irwin Avenue adjacent to Bay Beach Amusement Park in the amount of 79700 this is related to the item that Alder uh, Lafave brought forward a couple of months ago for us to investigate that East Shore Drive and, and Bay Beach area uh, relative to how the, the interconnection uh, with that basin and uh, operates during flood events. And we did indicate to you that after we did our preliminary analysis, this definitely appears to be beyond the scope of uh, our staff's ability to complete uh, due to the the, the rather complicated modeling. So again, we're requesting to contract with McMahon Associates to, to complete that hydrologic modeling. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Alder Scannell, second by Alder Gerlach. Questions? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carried. Number 13, consideration with possible action, a request by Department of Public Works to award professional engineering service contract Collins Engineers, Inc. for waterfront modifications for Lake Park. To investigate and complete the preliminary dessert and mooring systems for cruise ship docking in the amount of twenty six thousand two hundred. Uh, at the light park location, um, we've got the steel sheet pile wall, which is vertical along the river, and then the fendering. That that area had traditional fendering, which was creosote uh, soaked timbers, which were mounted to the uh, to the face of that wall that ships would bump up against when they were mooring. Um, those are not dynamic. They're, they don't change with the, uh, with the change in water elevation. Um, so those have fallen out of favor. The ones that were over there were in disrepair. We tore those off 10 years ago or so. So in most cases, the wall is just a simple flat sheet pile and doesn't provide adequate protection against uh, damage when ships moor up against it. As we do have representatives from the cruise industry, and matter of fact, even with the pandemic, we had uh, folks from Great Lakes Cruise, uh, Victory Cruise Lines in here just a, uh, about a month ago inspecting the facilities. Uh, we do need to get a fendering system in here because we are going to have cruise ships coming in, assuming that the cruise industry uh, bounces back in 2021. So we'd like to contract with Collins. Collins is uh, experienced in maritime engineering to design a fendering system for us over there. Uh, this will not only be used by the cruise ships, uh, but also during those periods when uh, tall ships come back to visit us. Uh, we do hope to recover uh, the cost of the capital costs uh, through the dockage fees that the cruise ships are going to be paying when they come in. Any questions from committee? Otherwise... Oh, uh, I did... Just get a message from Alder Burnett. I don't know if anybody else got that. Uh, mm -hmm. His battery died, or whoever is hosting the meeting, he's he's been kicked out. I'm not sure if it's his battery or something at our end. It no, he said his battery died. Yeah. So. He was asking whoever is hosting the meeting to let him in. Yeah, he says, could Steve Grenier let him in? I just got the text. I just see him oh. up on the corner. Do we want him back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Or> no. <laughs> He is back. I heard that. I heard that. My, my battery died at like the worst possible time because of the big issue of my district probably already talked about. Well, we, we did approve the. We've the approved everything. The contract. Yeah. The the contract. Contract. We're going to study it. I'll yes. touch with you, Steve, about it. Thank okay. you. Motion to approve this one. We are currently on item number 13. Yes, sir. Yeah. And we have a motion and a second to approve. Any discussion? Those in favor? I just, no. want, to say, I just want to say one thing. I think this was just an awesome proposal, and I love a good proposal. That's all. <laughs> all right. I think that's an endorsement. <laughs> yes. Now, those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Opposed? Motion carried. All right. Um, Alder Burnett, did you want to revisit? That one at all? Do you think you wanted to, to comment no, on it? And no, I mean, sure? no. Other than we, we've known about it, and I sent the email to the committee and Alder, or, so I can touch base with Public Works. No worries. It was approved, though unanimous. Okay. All right. Okay. On item number, it's all the same after a while. See, uh, consideration Four, with fourteen. Possible, fourteen. Consideration with possible action and request by Department of Public Works to award professional engineering service contract. Walker Consultant for the analysis of post-engine members at Main Street Ramp 
and design of repairs in the amount of $22,085. Try to keep this non-engineering for you if I can. Um, The way the ramps are built, it's precast concrete and there's cables running through that that after it's placed and after well after after the piece is cast um, tension is put on those cables so post tensioned and by putting tension on the cables it puts that entire beam into compression concrete strong in compression weak in tension Uh, so the cables carry the tension and keep the concrete in compression maximizing the strength over time chlorides get into that and start deteriorating those post tensioning cables we're starting to see some of that deterioration in the pine street ramp not a big surprise seeing as that ramp dates back to the 70s Uh, so before we have a catastrophic event we'd like walker to come in do some sampling on them and provide us with some recommendations on rehab of the post-tensioned members. All right. Questions from committee? Entertain a motion. I move to approve. Second. Second by Alder Gearlock, second by Alder Burnett. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. Number 15, consideration of possible action on request by Department of Public Works award annual contract with four annual renewals for chemical root treatment to Duke Root Control Incorporated. And we have been using Dukes for as long as I've been with the city, again, over 13 years. Uh, we have brought uh, justification for proprietary or sing- sole source bidding uh, with Dukes uh, several times in my tenure here. Dukes uses a there's a couple of different companies who can provide root treatment inside of a storm or sanitary sewer, uh, and they do it using chemicals. Dukes is a less harmful, less aggressive to the environment chemical than their, uh, than their competitors. And as a result, not only have they been a better ecological fit for us, but they've also been a lower cost service provider to us in the past. Um, we have gone out uh, and had a contract with annual renewals on it. Uh, the longest one we have done with them in the past was a, a one-year contract with four annual for a five-year total. That current contract has expired. Uh, we are, staff did go out, did their due diligence, uh, checked to see if there were any other service providers who could provide uh, the chemical root treatment. Uh, there are not, so it's still Duke's. We have compared the costs that they have been charging us versus what the anticipated costs in the future are uh, and found those costs to still be consistent and (laughs) as far as we're concerned, a very good deal. Um, So we're looking at a total cost expenditure for 2020 of about $47,450. So staff is recommending award of the 2020 contract and then uh, the approval of four one-year annual extensions pending review of the price. Questions from committee? Motion to approve. Second Motion by Second. Alder Scannell, second by Alder Gerlach to approve. Any discussion on that? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Number 16, consideration of possible action on ratification of the agreement between Green Bay Packaging, Inc. and the City of Green Bay regarding the transfer of PSS waste load obligations under the Fox River total maximum daily load. Director. And actually both this item and number 17, uh, that is why the city attorney has been on the line with us patiently waiting. So I'm gonna turn this over uh, to attorney Chavez. Attorney. Thank you, Brunier. Um, so for both of these um, items, um, I sent you guys an email earlier or late last week explaining why these ones are on the agenda um, the way they are. So when we passed the packaging uh, development agreement, 
agreement. I think it's been almost two years at this point. Um, there were a number of, of issues contemplated with it, with that transfer. Um, one of which was the TSS wastewater allocation. So it was something that they approached us, asked if we were interested in purchasing. And the city was interested in purchasing. It was uh, contemplated as a separate agreement. Fast forward a couple of years, um, we went ahead, drafted the agreement, got all the, the um, terms finalized, executed it, and then as we were putting this together, the tripartite, tripartite agreement, we realized that it was never actually formally approved by council. It was discussed by council, but not formally approved. So we're asking for approval on this one um, as ratification, simply because we've already executed it. So um, we could bring you a, a fresh copy um, but the idea of this one was always that it would be backdated um, or the effective date essentially would, would be as soon as the um, uh, agreement was executed. And so we were, since we were backdating it anyways, there was no point to, to bring in a new one. We would, we would just ratify this one with the council approval. Questions from committee? Yeah. All right. What are your should, should we take them both together? Does it? Mr. Chavez, does it matter, or should we take them separately, or can we take them? It doesn't matter if you take them separately. Um, they they basically refer to almost the same concept. Like the TSS is one where it's an agreement with us, um, actually stating what our our role is going to be as far as purchasing those credits go, and then the um, tripartite agreement is actually the agreement between us packaging and new water. And it's primarily between TSS and new water and allocating how they're actually gonna make um, all of their payments and everything work. And then we're mostly acting as like a fiduciary for them um, since they are the customer or we're the customer. Director Vineyard can correct me if I'm saying this wrong, but essentially since we're the customer, um, that's how we're making that flow properly. Um, so there's no issue with taking them either together or separate. Uh, motion to approve both. All right. Uh, I'm second. just going to read number. We have a motion and a second to approve, approve both. I'm just going to read number 17 for the record. Consideration of possible action and approval of the tripartite agreement between New Water, the City of Green Bay, and Green Bay Packaging regarding discharge of pretreated process wastewater from the new paper mill to NEW Water's mill interceptor. So that would be 17. So... Uh, we have a motion and a second to approve both of those, 16 and 17. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Attorney. You're welcome. Number 18, consideration with possible action on the review and award of the following contracts. A, Monroe Avenue retaining wall. B, RFB 3251 Green Bay Metro exterior sign replacement. Okay. Uh... We open, opened the bids for the Monroe Avenue retaining wall uh, just yesterday, so I apologize I was not able to get a summary out uh, to the council. Uh, we received one bid. The bid was from Highway Landscapers Incorporated in a, uh, in a value of $46,369. That was substantially below what we had estimated the project at. So even though we only got one bid, uh, the one bid we got was a super bid. So staff does recommend uh, award of that contract uh, to Highway Landscapers Incorporated in the amount of $46,369. Right, any questions for committee on that item? Motion to approve. All right, we have a motion by Elder Scano. Second. Second by Elder Gerlach to award to what do you bring your stated? Any discussion on that? Those in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? Motion carried. Item B. And B, I'm not finding any information on, so I would recommend hold on that item uh, if I can track down the, the bid summary through, because that was let through the purchasing department, not through, uh, not through Public Works. Um, if I, and I, I do anticipate that tomorrow or Friday I will be successful in, uh, in having a discussion with uh, the purchasing manager on that. Uh, we will get those uh, summaries off to the committee. It'll become uh, 
part of the minutes from this meeting uh, and then somebody will be able to pull that item on the council floor and change the hold uh, to a recommendation to award. Yeah. Can I get a hold? Motion, a motion to hold. Motion by Elder Scano. Second by Elder Burnett to hold this item. Discussion, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carried. Number 19, report the award of the following contracts. A, sewers 720, mini sewers, and B, sewers 820, Finger Road Sanitary Sewer. Okay, included in your packet, we have provided bid summaries for sewer 7-20 mini sewers and sewers 8-20 Finger Road Sanitary Sewer. Uh, 7-20 looks like we had eight bidders ranging from a high of $280,566.80 to a low of $157,620. Uh, Kip Gulseth Construction was the low bidder, so a contract was awarded uh, to Gulseth. I believe they've actually started construction on that uh, mini storm project already. Sewers 8 20 is a continuation of the Grandview sewer project that we have been talking about uh, out on the Far East side. Uh, the Grandview uh, Sanitary Sewer Project is an interceptor sewer that was funded by TID dollars. Uh, out there providing necessary infrastructure for future development. Um, that runs north-south on Grandview Road. Uh, the Finger Road Sanitary Sewer is actually going to run east-west and as opposed to being an interceptor sewer is actually a local collection sewer providing for direct access uh, to properties. This will run off to the east uh, from the intersection of Grandview and Finger. Uh, if you remember when we constructed the extension of East Mason Street several years ago, uh, it contains a couple of split S corners out there and then ultimately joins back up. East Mason becomes Finger Road again, uh, where we terminated that portion of Finger just immediately east of Grandview Road, uh, there's a cul-de-sac there. So from that intersection past the cul-de-sac, uh, through the ditch line and then back out into uh, Finger at Mason Street. That's where this Finger Road Sewer 8-20 contract uh, comes into play. And that provides direct sewer access, makes developable parcels out of four city-owned parcels out in that I-43 Industrial Park. Uh, so we've got, this, we've got the interceptor out there to provide for future development, and we're actually putting... Uh, local collection sewer in to make those properties sewer serviceable and ultimately they now become a saleable property ready for development. Um, total of eight uh, bids received here from a high of $586,542.75 uh, to a low uh, from the low responsive responsible bidder advanced construction three hundred eighty seven thousand four hundred three dollars and forty nine cents staff uh, did award the contract to advanced construction in the amount of three hundred eighty seven thousand four hundred three dollars and forty nine cents and we have held a precon uh, for that and we expect water or, uh, construction to start uh, very very shortly here thank you Steve since these are just a report of actions taken I need to receive in place on file motion Receive in place on file. Motion by Elder Scannell. Second. Second by Elder Gerlach. Any discussions on those? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, carried. Information objectives report. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if we can go back and reconsider that uh, that request for bids uh, for Metro. It's been found. <laughs> I'll uh, a motion to reconsider 19B. Or no, uh, it was uh, 18B, sorry. Motion to reconsider. All right, good. Motion by Elder Scannell, second by Elder Burnett to reconsider 18B. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, Pose. Motion carried. Okay, hey, Steve. What do you okay, have? better than being found. Jim just reminded me. The reason we don't have it is because it's a metro contract and it goes before the Transit Commission and did not need to appear on our... Uh, on our agenda that was mistakenly put on so that hold can be changed to a receive in place on file. Or would it just be a refer to Metro? That would be fine too. Refer to Metro. Refer to Transit Commission? Yeah, or Transit, yeah, yeah. Refer to Transit Commission. Referral. 
to transit commission by Elder Scannell. Second. Second by Elder Burnett. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, it's more scary. All right. Informational. What do you have for Steve? Did well, we do I number two? Oh, no. I jumped right over it. Good catch. I don't want to miss that. Oh, uh, no. We don't want those site mocks built. No. Uh, report of actions taken by Department of Public Works. Um, a granting of licenses to sidewalk builders, A. Al Dix Concrete LLC and B. Concrete Solutions Incorporated. They good to go? Good to go. Uh, all they, right. They, they, again, this is a report out, yep. so receive and place on file. Yep. Motion to receive and place on file. Second. Report Scannell and Gerlock to receive and place on file. Discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right. Now informational uh, director. Sure, and a very short uh, director's report tonight. Uh, thank you for your time uh, and your patience working through a rather long agenda tonight. Um, just wanted to let everyone know that construction is moving forward uh, towards a completion. We've made a lot of really good progress this year uh, and had a rather aggressive construction schedule and things are really moving forward uh, and we are looking forward to getting things done within the contract uh, construction season. Had a conversation with water utility earlier today, uh, and I'm definitely not gonna steal their thunder, so I wanna make sure that you know they will be coming out with a press release in the very near future, announcing a date and time uh, to have kind of a celebration for removal of the last uh, public side led water service in the city of Green Bay. So they will complete before the end of this year. Uh, been a pleasure to work with them on that, but they've carried the, the heavy lifting. Uh, they've done a fantastic job uh, in, in getting the lead out. Uh, and then uh, just wanted to let you folks know, uh, I will be meeting with, uh, with the mayor, I believe on Friday afternoon. Uh, to go through the department uh, and mayor level uh, discussions relative to the budget. Um, we did sharpen a pencil as much as we could and I'm coming in as absolutely dead flat uh, from 2019, uh, the 2020 to 2021 budget as we could. There were some minor cost adjustments. So e even taking into consideration cost of living adjustments on salary and fringe, uh, we've still been able to keep uh, our DPW levy supported budget uh, pretty much dead flat. So it, it's been through a lot of hard work and I, gotta, I, I definitely need to recognize uh, division managers. Um, Jim Burnett uh, working with the engineering uh, and traffic sections, uh, Chris Pierlot in operations uh, and, and traffic, and then Matt Hackenleibel on the utility side of things. All three of them have, uh, have, have really uh, taken the, the load this year, uh, taken a very, very hard look at, at service lines and how to continue to serve the, the residents uh, here in the city of Green Bay and, and try to keep those costs uh, contained as much as possible. So I, I hope you're, um, I'd like to say I'd hope you're, you're, you're as pleased as I am. I don't know that I'm necessarily pleased uh, I'd love to have the budgets higher than they are because I think uh, there are additional things that we could be doing and Lord knows uh, we're kind of just scraping by but uh, I am happy, very happy, very impressed with the work that my staff has been able to do uh, in bringing forward a very responsible budget and, and look forward to having those discussions with each of you um, relative to our budget and what, what value we bring to the city. So that concludes my report. Thanks Steve. Uh, I, I know and then Elder Scannell, I go to you too. I, you know, appreciate all the work your staff does. It's been a tough year, you know, from COVID to all the flooding we've had and <laughs> the different manning techniques you've had to do with one person instead of two here and there. You've always been very responsive to all my my residents and myself. So I, I think I probably email you daily. <laughs> you are, you're on, and you're always, you know, right on top of it. You've done a bang up job. Elder Scannell? Yeah, just kudos and uh, much appreciated. And uh, I'm glad when working with uh, water utility, you could go with the flow. <laughs> May I ask a question, please? Yeah, go ahead. Um, just totally unrelated, and thank you for all the fine work. But um, as for work that needs to be done yet, my um, immediate neighborhood seems to be the next one that's going to get all the sidewalk repairs. And so where all the X's and C's are, should people assume that's going to all be done yet before winter? 
Not necessarily. It, there are certain areas within your district um, that were not marked out as part of this year's sidewalk repair contract, but instead were part of the program that you as a council adopted that was brought forward um, to do a forward-looking, uh, more comprehensive sidewalk inspection program. So some of those were marked out by summer students for uh, for repair or replacement in 2021. Okay. And may I also ask, um, oh God, what was the other thing I was going to ask if it's, if it's going to be done? It has completely slipped my mind. It wasn't important. Uh, when you think of it, just drop a line, give me a I call, or, or send an email. be happy to, to address it. All right. Any other questions from committee? All right. Entertain a motion to receive and place it on file. Motion to receive and place on file. Second. Motion by Scannell, second by Gearlock. Under discussion. Those in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Opposed? Motion carried. Looks like our next meeting is tentatively scheduled to the 23rd. And uh, motion to uh, adjourn. No public hearings. So we have a motion to adjourn. Second. And a second. We're out. Aye. Oh, Aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we might have tied, I guess. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Have a good Thank, night. Thank you. Good all. Night. Thank you.